In this video, I'll show you how to generate images with Firefly integration directly into Adobe Captivate. Okay, real quickly, I've just taken a look at the analytics of my YouTube channel. Still, 86% of you are not subscribed to this channel, so I'd love to ask if you would please just press that subscribe button. It's absolutely free, and of course you'll get the added benefit of being notified when I post a new video. This video today is about the new integration of Firefly AI image generation directly inside Adobe Captivate. It's not really new for me. I've been using Firefly for probably the better part of a year or two, and it's worked really well for my e-learning development. But it means that I always need to, you know, Alt-Tab to uh, another screen to find that image. The advantage of having this feature built right into Adobe Captivate is that it should speed up my workflow because I'll simply be using the tools that are built within Adobe Captivate. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so I have a slide here that I'm not particularly happy with. I think this image of a sea turtle trapped inside a what looks like a plastic bag isn't really a clear message for the learners that might be taking this course. So uh, I'm going to change this slide up and I'm going to take advantage of Adobe Captivate's new Firefly integration with uh, generative AI, specifically when it relates to images. And we're going to do a few things to, I think, improve this, uh, this slide overall. First thing is, is that I want to point out that generative AI is not just limited to the foreground images that you use. You can, of course, go to your slide background and you can change the background of the entire slide to image. And that gives you the possibility to generate an image of your so choosing. So in this case here, let's go ahead and use that right away. Instead of putting in a default image, we'll go generate and this will open up the generate image panel over to your left here. Now, in this example, for the background, I think I'm gonna choose art. Art is a little bit different than photo. Photo is gonna be, you know, uh, literally a photo quality AI generated image, but art can be a little bit more interesting, especially for backgrounds here. The other thing you can do with, uh, with all of the generate image options is you can provide reference images. So if you wanted to follow a certain composition, you could attach a photo image that is similar to what you want. Or if you're looking for a particular style, you can choose that as well. A little bit of a, a mini help option with the rollovers here. I'm gonna go ahead with style. I have an image in mind, and in this case here, I believe it's this image here. Let's just open that up. You'll see a little mini thumbnail of what it looks like. This is sort of a under the sea type background image here. And I just need to provide a description of this. So I want under sea image light color that will contrast with the foreground to produce a nice background. I'm not sure what to write here, but you can suffice it to say your prompt of what you're looking for uh, will go here. There is an eyedropper tool here and it's kind of an interesting use. So if you use the eyedropper, you can select one of the two text elements on this slide. So maybe coastal awareness might be something you might want to add to that. And then we can now go ahead and press generate and see what comes up. Okay, so yeah, this is very similar to what we had uh, in my original uh, style composition here, but it is a little bit different. Uh, you are given two variations that you can choose from. So if you click on one of these, you can see what it does in the background there. Um, and then you can look at the other variation to see what you like better. Um, and I kind of like the other one better. I think that's this well, the second one is a better choice here. It does uh, start to make me think, okay, I'm going to need 
um, a card behind this just to isolate the text from that background. And there are certain things you can do to that card. Of course, you could add a rounded corner to it if you wish. Uh, you could change the solid fill to a different color. Or sometimes what I like to do is not make it entirely uh, not transparent. Just give it a little bit of uh, transparency here and just play with that. So you can still read the text very clearly, but you can kind of see that background image. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next, I want to replace this foreground image, this image of the sea turtle trapped in plastic, which certainly uh, emphasizes one of the points over here with dispose of trash properly. But I want this slide to be fairly optimistic. So showing a sea turtle that, you know, could ultimately have a very bad outcome because of this plastic uh, element here. I don't want to do that. So I can do one of two things. I can either click on the generate image, which is probably a little bit more direct, or you can go into uh, generate image from the generative AI button at the top here. So let's do that. Let's do generate image. Now, in this case here, I have a reference image in mind here, and this is uh, also for composition as well. And so I'm going to choose that. It probably would work under both cases, uh, but this is just another image of a sea turtle. Um, but this will be a photo. I like the art ID in the background, but I think for this one, I'm going to use a photo and I'm going to say um, image of a sea turtle swimming and enjoying its life, something like that. Uh, again, you could uh, use slide text as a prompt as well. So maybe I'm just going to press enter here and we'll use the uh, the slide text for this as sort of a prompt as well. We'll go ahead and we'll press generate. And we'll see what comes up. So there's a few choices here. Let's take a look at the first one. Oh, I like that one. That's nice. Um, this one's a little bit more photorealistic. This one's almost more art. Let's just see what happens when I switch this to art and press generate. I like that one. This one seems a little busy to me with the sunlight and the water reflections and so on. This first one is pretty cool and I think it matches well with that background image. So I think I'm going to keep that one and that's all I need to do. And I don't need to worry about um, attributing this to any particular person or artist. This is entirely AI generated. Adobe does go to great length to ensure that you don't have to worry about copyright claims against you or anything like that. So pretty happy with this result. And uh, that's how you use the generative AI, specifically with the generate image feature, which is coming from the Firefly integration from Adobe. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.